The Shanghai Tower is a symbol of architectural grandeur and engineering marvel that rises majestically over the bustling cityscape of Shanghai. It was the world's second tallest structure when it was completed in 2015. The impressive appearance belies a more nuanced story that casts doubt on the idea of its success. Join us on a trip to discover why the Shanghai Tower's legacy is entangled in a web of triumphs, disappointments, and the ultimate question of whether or not it lived up to its amazing promise. From its lofty goals to the harsh realities it faced, let's explore the reasons behind its failure. Why did it fail to live up to the expectations of the people? The Shanghai Tower is like a shining star in the constellation of modern China's construction projects, with its designers aiming to make it the apple of China's eye, symbolizing the pinnacle of their economic development. The Shanghai Tower, standing tall at a staggering height of 632 meters, truly reaches for the sky and casts its shadow over the bustling Chinese financial hub. In fact, it reigns supreme as the second tallest structure on the face of the earth. This is the heart-wrenching tale of the mighty skyscraper that reached for the stars, only to come crashing down in a blaze of glory. The wheels were set in motion for the birth of Shanghai Tower back in 1993. Shanghai's urban landscape went through a complete makeover after the introduction of economic reforms in the late 1980s and early 1990s, turning the city into a whole new ballgame. The city's status as China's financial hub called for the construction of multiple office buildings, so plans were made for a trio of skyscrapers that would truly reach for the stars. The first of these three buildings, the Jin Mao Building, was finished in 1999. And over a decade later in 2009, the Shanghai World Financial Center saw the light of day. After toiling away for a whopping eight years and crafting a mind-boggling 128 stories, the peculiar building finally reached completion, leaving the entire world in awe of its colossal size and unconventional design. There are a total of 128 stories spread among nine conical towers, all of which are surrounded by the tower's interior skins. Nine district locations provide access to Shanghai Tower's public spaces between this level and the curved top level. Every one of these nine areas has its own central atrium filled with shops, restaurants, and greenery with breathtaking views of the surrounding area. The outside is see-through on both floors, and there are shops and restaurants on the ground floor. This skyscraper superblock now stands as one of the most densely packed spots on Earth, boasting over a million square meters of space up for grabs. Up to 16,000 visitors a day can visit the building. The architects reimagined the classic Shanghai land courtyards, which are typically quite modest within a spiraling form. The skyscraper's vertically structured gathering spaces are meant to replace the city's dispersed parks. These groundbreaking rooftop gardens set the building apart from any other skyscraper in existence by placing shops, cafes, and other commercial amenities on the atrium floors, a new kind of public space has been created in a Shanghai skyscraper that is ideal for both working and living. The lifts in Shanghai Tower, which were ingeniously designed by Mitsubishi, holds the prestigious title of being the fastest lifts in the entire world. These remarkable machines effortlessly whisk passengers to their desired destinations at mind-boggling speeds reaching an astonishing velocity of 74 kilometers per hour. With such incredible swiftness, these lifts redefine the concept of efficient vertical transportation, providing a seamless and exhilarating experience for those fortunate enough to ride them. That's faster than the speed limit on most town roads. But then suddenly, what happened that led to its horrible failure? One problem was that it took ages for the tower to receive all of its fire certifications due to bureaucratic red tape and safety concerns from the local fire officials. As the tower's operating deficits continued to pile up, it found itself in deep water with over $1.5 billion in debt. Secondly, the building's twisted glass front, which was a double-edged sword, ended up being a thorn in the side for renters due to its reduced floor plate size. Since the tower's much-touted outer shell allows for natural light and reduces air conditioning costs, most of the floor space was not actually utilized resulting in an overall rate of efficiency of just 50% on certain levels, compared to 70% for a conventional skyscraper. Some Chinese social media users also panned the leak, saying it was indicative of widespread poor building practices in China. To prevent the building from swaying in strong winds, technicians used a crane to stack steel plates and set up a 1,200-ton damper towards the top of the tower. Pistons, guided by a computer, propel the damper into the path of strong winds to mitigate their impact. Without a damper, the building's peak may sway by as much as five feet during a typhoon. Did you know that it boasts the tallest observation deck in the entire world? If you're a fan of tall buildings or just want a breathtaking panorama, 
the Shanghai Tower's observation deck on the 121st floor is your best chance. The observation deck is the highest in the world at 561.3 meters, giving visitors a bird's eye view over Lujiazu and the Hangpu River. When only half of Shanghai Tower is illuminated at night, it's like a glaring spotlight on the building's low occupancy rate. This is partly because the high-end J Hotel that has been promised for the tower's higher floors for years has been hit by a string of opening delays, making it a real thorn in their side. Shanghai Tower's business strategy hinged on the fact that it had all its ducks in a row when it came to world-class sustainability credentials, which ultimately sealed the deal and earned it the prestigious LEED Platinum certification. Investors are always on the lookout for ways to kill two birds with one stone when it comes to super tall buildings, reducing upkeep and energy expenses. After all, a penny saved is a penny earned. On the other hand, LEED certified buildings are like a golden goose, able to demand up to 30% higher rents. It's a win-win situation for both the planet and the pocket. The tower is a real gem, boasting over 40 energy-saving features that really take the cake. Picture this, a dual-layered glass shell that's as cool as a cucumber, naturally cooling and ventilating the building inside. And that's not all. It's got a rainwater recycling system that's the cherry on top, making it stand tall and proud. Apart from this, wind forces were discovered to be reduced by 24% thanks to the precision engineering of the building's twist, which led to significant cost savings. However, despite pulling out all the stops, these efforts failed to reel in tenants in the building's early years, and Shanghai Tower ultimately opened its doors during a stormy period for the Chinese economy, adding fuel to the fire of the issues already mentioned. Tenants were being asked to fork over an arm and a leg in rent, even though business occupancy rates were dropping like a lead balloon throughout the city. The International Monetary Fund, concurred that China's business decision-making on construction projects was as clear as mud. There isn't a private corporation in the world that could afford to construct a tower of this magnitude and then lease out just a drop in the ocean of its space. Although the Shanghai Tower was built to the highest engineering standards and received widespread appreciation for its design, making it an instantly recognizable emblem of China, it is sometimes seen through rose-colored glasses as a true blue representation of the country's economic success. The more we learn about the history of the Shanghai Tower, the more we realize how many different elements have contributed to its polarizing reputation. In a nutshell, the Shanghai Tower can be seen as a case of biting off more than one can chew when evaluating its overall impact and success. The Shanghai Tower is a symbol of a magnificent ideal that failed representing the extremes of human emotion from elation to despair. This architectural masterpiece, which was once held up as a sign of victory, failed to live up to its billing. Despite its initial acclaim and grandeur, the tower has hit a few bumps in the road that have thrown a wrench in its gears. The sky-high costs, safety red flags, scarcity on the market, and logistical hurdles have put a damper on potential buyers' interest in putting their money down on its residential units. Furthermore, the tower's exclusive amenities and regulations have thrown a wrench in the works, making it difficult for the community to come together and thrive. When it comes to evaluating its overall legacy, the Shanghai Tower misses the mark and doesn't quite measure up to the high hopes and grand ambitions that set the bar for a triumphant architectural and real estate endeavor. What are your opinions on the failure of Shanghai Tower? Do let us know your views in the comments below.